What's up everyone, I'm Don Ferguson and welcome back to another kick-ass episode of Something New here in the Teak Life Basement Bar. So if you don't know what Teak Life is by now, you must be spending too much time in the bar. It is a platform where we talk about liquors from all over the world and give them a taste and let you know what we think about them. So make sure to hit that subscribe button, comment, like, and share. So on this week's episode of Something New, we are trying a legend in the making an old school bourbon that has come back to life and I'm talking about Joe Lewis bourbon so let me find a glass and tell you a little bit more about the brand okay everybody here's the finer points about Joe Lewis bourbon it was released in 2020 but this brand dates back to 1952 and it's known as the comeback of an authentic American spirit. Now, Joe Louis Bourbon is distilled and bottled in Blue Hills of Davis Valley in Virginia. One of the super cool facts behind this brand, bringing it back to life, is that Joe Louis's son, Jojo, is involved in this bourbon. Joe Louis Bourbon is aged in a medium char American oak barrel. It is aged for a minimum of two years, which is awesome, and it's 90 proof. Now, during the distillation process, they actually use limestone-rich natural well waters from the Davis Valley, and everything that they use is pretty much locally sourced. Okay, here's the fun facts. This is what everybody wants to know. What's the mash bill? So this is very heavy on the corn. 65% corn, 15% rye, and then 20% imported barley. Who's ready to taste? All right, put your hands down. Let's go taste. So 65% corn. That's probably going to have a sweet. Ooh, that's really tight. So we're going to get into a little education really quick. I love it, and I, I kind of highlight it when it's nice and tight and you get that pop. The reason why is when a cork is actually very nice and tight, what it does is it protects it from elements. It's pretty rare that somebody's going to buy a fifth of something really good, premium, high price, whatever it may be, and drink the entire bottle that night. So when it has a tight top like this one, it's going to protect it over time from evaporation and from oxidation. So that is a really good thing, and it's important. Now this is aged for two years, so we're actually going to do a pour, and we're going to let it breathe and and you know so that way i can get all the flavors and while we do and let that aerate let's talk a little bit about the bottle which i really like because one of the things is it's got joe looking badass he looks like he's about to go whip some ass which he did very well the back of the label has a crowd but it's got the the bottle tag and then also when you have your bottle you'll be able to see it there's the story of joe and how he started in boxing and, and some really, really good, you know, nuggets about him. So you can also go to the website and read it too. But anyway, the bottle, easy to hold, but is real, is real heavy. This is a heavy duty bottle. Color, as I can actually smell, I can smell this whiskey in the air already, but that's why I use a Glen Cairn glass too. But the color is a nice, I would say a deep, copper brown it's really light because my lights are kind of bright but it's beautiful it's almost like a a rich golden straw you see the legs coming down uber slowly it is a 90 proof so it's nothing to play with but i really really like the color great great hue let's nose yes corn you can absolutely get that corn up front. There's not much of the alcohol vapors that are billowing up whatsoever, especially for this being a 90. Not bad, it's, it's got a really nice smooth aroma. Some oak, almost some cedar, which is interesting. I would say some baking spices, some caramelized sugar. There's, man, there's just a nice sweetness in this. Really, really gentle aroma so so far i'm liking it let's go in for the tasting so 
smooth. A little bit of spice. I'm getting that sweet corn. A little tang of the rye. A citrus, but almost like the zest. So like an orange or maybe like a, a lemon zest. It's a little bit of cinnamon on the back end. Now as it goes down, you know, it's got a little bit of spice to it. I'm getting... Mm. Man, I love a good bourbon or a good whiskey. And as you drink, each sip, something else jumps out of you and punches you right in the face. Kind of like Joe would do. And he did. He whipped ass. Man, it's got a great smell. It's got a little bit of a caramel brown sugar hint to it. Definitely getting that oak. The spice is, is really going down. Uh, but it is corn heavy. Uh, I would definitely say there's a sweetness with the corn that is very much up front. Oh man, the third the third sip is usually the best because your palate is adjusted, it's it's balanced, and it's able to bring in all of those flavors so you can really, really enjoy it. This is really well done. I'm just enjoying this one. And really when I got to, you know, review this one, I was really excited because there is a strong Detroit connection. We're based in Michigan, just outside of Detroit, and Joe Lewis in 1926 actually moved to Detroit. And there's a monument in downtown Detroit that is symbolic. I don't know if it's known around the world, but everybody knows about it here in Michigan, and it's the fist of Joe Lewis. And it's an 8,000 pound, 24 foot long fist sculpture and it was a gift to the city from Sports Illustrated. It was gifted in 1986. And it kind of shows the strength of the city. And Joe was just, Joe Lewis was a powerful figure. I mean, we had an arena named after Joe Lewis, the Joe Lewis Arena, where the Detroit Red Wings won tons of championships. So Joe Lewis is a hero to many cities and one that I particularly, you know, just happen to live very close to. So. Enough about the city of Detroit. Let's talk bourbon. And is this a champion or is it getting knocked out? I really like it. I truly do. It's got great elements, uh, depth of character. I'm going to take one more. You really get that oak, a little bit of spice. It smooths out completely by the third sip. And I do get the rye mixed with a sweet corn which is kind of unique so I would absolutely say that this is teak life approved because I really like it it's an enjoyable sipper it's not strong it's not overpowering as far as that burn that alcohol it's very well blended so Joe Lewis what a legacy and the legacy continues on in an amazing bourbon so my glass is getting low that means it wraps up another episode of something new here in the Teak Life Basement Bar. Make sure to subscribe to the Teak Life YouTube channel. Turn the notifications on so you don't miss any episodes. Comment, like, and share. Follow us on social media. But if there's anything that you think we should be trying right here, hit that email. And make sure to stay tuned after the credits roll, boom, for the Teak Life Truth. We're talking more about Joe Lewis. See you next. So welcome to a Teak Life Truth, and we just tried Joe Lewis Bourbon, Teak Life approved, obviously, because you just watched the episode, but let's talk a little bit more about the icon himself, Joe Lewis. And Joe Lewis carries on a legacy of being one of, if not the greatest heavyweight boxers of all time. In 1952, Joe Lewis co-founded Joe Lewis Kentucky Straight Bourbon. Bet you didn't know that. So what's new was once old. And what's old is now new. Does that make sense? Anyway, try to keep up with me. And on the bottle back then was Champion 
of them all. Boom. So they're staying true to what Joe did a long time ago, decades ago. Now the old bottles had a replica of Joe Lewis's signature, just like these new bottles. What was the difference between the old and the new? Well, this one is actually 90 proof, whereas the 1952 version was only 86 proof. Only 86? It's still strong. It was around about a year before. I don't know what happened. And if you know, please email me, comment below, whatever. How did they promote the bourbon back then? Well, it was kind of clever. They used different colored mini boxing gloves to promote the bourbon. And it had, I believe, a likeness on him, or it had something that was very, very clear as an indicator that this was for Joe Louis bourbon. The old version was produced and bottled in Lawrenceburg, Kentucky, and it was a Kentucky straight bourbon. So that is kind of the mecca of bourbon land. And I've seen empty bottles of the old one selling on eBay for some pretty, pretty high prices. So if you happen to have one at home and you don't want it, I, I don't know, like I'll trade you a shot of the new bourbon for that old bottle. Think, think of your friends here. So anyway, that's a Teak Life Truth. Joe Lewis, a legend, and he continues with that legacy. We'll see you on the next episode.